Amen. Thank you. Minister Michel, welcome. <laughs> Blessings. God is good. And all the time. Amen. We'll just start with a word of prayer before we continue. And we've been praying. Heavenly Father, we just give you thanks and we give you praise. As we assemble in your presence, O oh Lord Father. We we'll lift up praises unto you. Even in our own voices, O oh Lord Father, and we've received it. Right now, O oh Lord Father, I bring forth the bread of life. And I ask you, O oh Lord Father, to use me as your servant, O oh Lord Father, to be a blessing unto my brothers and sisters through Christ Jesus. Open their hearts to receive, their minds to be renewed, O oh Lord God, by your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Have your seats. God's good all the time. Amen. Wow. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. This morning I'd like to share on something. This is our month of gladness. And you know, while I was studying about gladness, why are we glad? What makes us glad? You know, there are certain different things that people say, you know, if I get this, I'll be glad. If I have received this, I'll be glad. But when I looked at it all, true gladness, even as Pastor Gerald was just saying, comes from knowing the monarch of all creations. Amen? True gladness, and my title for the message is Gladness comes from knowing and living by God's word. First and foremost, that's it. In that, you know, all things are going to flourish. Amen? And we can start by looking in the book of Proverbs. And we're looking at first at Proverbs 1. And verse 8. It says, My son, hear the instructions of your father and do not forsake the law of your mother, for there will be a graceful ornament upon thy head and chains upon thy neck. Amen? And we skip two books down, not two books, sorry, two chapters down, and we look to Proverbs 4, verse 1 to 4. Hear, my children, the instructions of a father, and give attention to no understanding, for I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law. When I was my father's son, tender and only one in the sight of my mother, he also taught me and said to me, let your heart retain my words. Keep my commandments and live. Amen? Oh, those words are basic instructions. I think all of us would say we have heard them sometime. But then after, let's look at our lives today. I can only use Trinidad and Tobago in terms of, but I think if you can look around the world, you can look at it in the news. What's the culture of living? Do those things that I've just read show forth what is happening today or what we hear on the news? Do we see individuals living like this, respecting one another, having reverence to God? When we drive on the road, I mean, I have, we have visitors here, their culture may be a bit different, but I'm almost certain there are certain things that they would have seen interacting in their country that they are almost saying, they're like a home, maybe the same thing happening here. You understand? We have mommy visiting us. And that culture is, do we really show forth that love one to another? When we are driving on the road, and that's going to be the overall testimony. When somebody stops and is trying to come out, do you just think, of, I have to get where I have to get, so they have to wait. Or when somebody rushes you, you pull back and you say, hey, it was so blatant last two weeks, a young man lost his life in Digo Martin for a bad drive. And he was in the right. But he lost his life. This week, on the, headline, on the front page of the Express, you saw two individuals squaring off with knives in hand because of a bad drive. Temper flaring up. Why is it? Didn't these gentlemen or young people for some time have somebody speak in their lives and ask God to be a guide unto them. The mother for the young man cried and said, 
Why? For the entire week that guy was traveling to work. And that morning he decided to take up his car because he wanted to get early, get there early. Going about his business, got a bad drive and just asked the guy why and received 10 bullets. You ask yourself why. What is our culture coming to? Is that our culture? Or are we training or taking time to train up our children and to live and speak one to another's lives the goodness, the mercy, the grace of God to pray about a situation other than just react on the flesh? It is so easy to say, I will give you peace of my mind, or this is how I feel. But what does God's word say in the situation? I have a 12 year old son, and sometimes. When he and his sister get angry, he just, I say, hey, would you stop and think about the situation? Why are you reacting like that? But daddy, I feel. I said, yeah. But do you feel, well, how you feel, is that the right thing? You see, I have to start now with him. Because one day, he's going to want to be a father. Before that, he's going to want to be a husband. Before that, he's going to have to interact. He's going to want to drive on the streets. And if I can't teach him how to stop it, and to be patient and to think about before he reacts. Then after, unfortunately, and I pray it's not upon his life, but upon any other, other members of his lives, that something may happen where he may react and somebody else would may react. And the wrong thing may take place. I just read for you for us to give instructions to our children that they may live. And that must be part of us not only speaking it, but living it. This morning, Bishop shared with us in terms of perception. And I, I don't want to be part of that as well. Because I can speak all these things. I can share all these things. But my life must also be part of these things. The song that we, my sister just ministered, they said, hmm, let me see if I can quote the verse. Let my life be a what? A testimony. How is your life going to be a testimony? Only by you speaking, the right thing, in the right crowd? What about when you happen to be in the wrong crowd? Would you still speak the right thing? Again, let's look at the book of Proverbs. And let's look at, let me see, Proverbs, same four. And we are looking from verse hmm, 13. Verse 13. Take firm hold of instruction. Do not let go. Keep her, for she is life. Do not enter the path of the wicked, and do not walk in the ways of evil. Avoid it. Do not travel on it. Turn away from it and pass on. Sleep unless they have done evil, and their sleep is taken away unless they make someone fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. But the path of the just is like a shining sun that shines ever brighter onto the perfect day. Let that last part be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen? Let us take time to interact with one another from that perception. Let our eyes be so fixed on God's word that it comes through us in the name of Jesus. Even when we get angry. We are quick to quote the scripture. And it says, be angry and sin not. But do we live that scripture? When you get a bad drive, how do you react? You have to repent, you know. I told this in this church already. There was a time my family was in the car. And I was coming from home. Actually, we were coming to church, right, sweetheart? We were coming to church. And some guys in a vehicle flew, literally flew past us and pulled on us and hit the vehicle, but did not stop. And for a while there, Pastor Gerald, you know there's a switch somewhere that just goes off automatically? Well, that one went off automatically. The, the old Caesar, I say Pastor Caesar, no, that wasn't Pastor Caesar, it was Caesar, just flipped in. And I just said, what? Because my wife is in the car, my children are in the back. They just hit the car and go on. No stop, no. And I just took off behind them. 
I forgot I was coming to church. They, I was supposed to be coming to Belmont. That vehicle was going in Karanaj. I ended up behind the vehicle going Karanaj too. Until my wife tried to shake me back into reality. Leave them alone. And I said, Lord God, deal with that too. And I came back and I said, yeah. Got the number. But for a second there, Pastor Jerry, you see? I'm telling you plain. Because that was happening sometimes. We get or something happens and we trip. And we have got to be fixed on God's word that hey the Holy Spirit did grab us. Thank God my wife was with me. I'm saying it true because I don't know what would happen. I was vexed, but I guess the trip happened because my family was with me. And I'm saying, hey, this could have been so much different. We've got to understand that we are based on the instruction that God has given us and the guidance that around us have to live that word. In the book of Deuteronomy, when the law was first given to the children of Israel, Moses said something that kind of shook me up when I looked at it. When I was dealing with this one in terms of understanding God's word. And I shared this message from one way, and I was telling my wife, I don't know how I want to share it the same way, but God has a way of delivering what he needs to deliver in Jesus' name. Amen? And in Deuteronomy, in the sixth chapter, he said it's the greatest com- one of the commandments. Moses said unto the children, and I'm going to read from chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 1 to 9. And then I'm going to read again in Deuteronomy from chapter 31. And we're going to look at God's word. He said, now is the commandment and these are, sorry, now this is the commandment and these are the statutes and judgments which the Lord your God has commanded to teach you that you would observe them in the land which you are crossing over to possess. Now, I want to stop there. All the time Moses was teaching the children, coming through from, this is after the Exodus when they prepared to go into the moon. And Moses was talking to the people all the time. Now, this is the commandment God has given. He said, you are going to what? What I have just said? You are going to observe them in the land which you are crossing over. So now he has given them a new commandment now to set themselves in order, to follow. This is what I'm going to you to possess. I want you to use these laws to hold forth and to guard and to keep what you are going to possess. Amen? That you may fear the Lord your God to keep all his statutes and his commandments which I command you and your sons and your grandsons all the days of your life and that your days may be prolonged. Therefore, fear, O Israel, and be careful to observe it that it may be well with you and that you may multiply greatly as the Lord your God the Lord your the Lord God of your fathers has promised you a land flowing with milk and honey hear O Israel the Lord our God the Lord is one you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul and with all your strength and these words which I command you to be shall be in your heart you shall teach them diligently to your children. You shall talk of them when, they, when you sit in your house. You shall walk by the way when you lie down. And when you rise up, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand. And you shall be, sorry, and they shall be as frontless before your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Besides your Bible, I'm quoting your Bible. Is there any place in your house or in your workplace or even in your vehicle that you have put a scripture that just keeps you on track? See, most of us pick up the Bible Wednesday when we come into church. We put on the radio when we drive in the car, listen to a little praise and worship. Pick up the Bible when we come on Sunday or if we have a meeting during the course of the week come to church. But other than that, where is the word? Is it so hidden in your heart that you can call upon it at any point in time? No matter what the situation. Here the children of Israel are given the law to now put it before them in any situation. 
in any situation. What really chewed me when I read this, he said, and you shall talk of them when you sit in your house. How many of us besides, okay, TDN, whatever you listen, just sit down and discuss the word with your family. When there's a situation, do you draw on the word to correct something in your house? Or do you just say, this is how we do it, or this is how it should be done? But is the word at the center of it? Hmm. Think on that. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and you shall be, and they shall be as frontlets before your eyes. What is before your eyes? What is before your eyes? You see, gladness. 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 Our scripture, 126, 3 Psalms. Gladness. If these things are not before you, what is going to be your source? Bishop spoke about um, perception this morning. Again, I want to draw on that. And he talked about money and how, you f and how you view money. Money is supposed to be a slave. If you do not understand that money is a slave, then after, you will be a slave to money. Correct? So now, if that perception isn't taught to the young ones in today's economy, in today's life, they see so much things. They see by television, internet. They see all these things, and they see it acquired. They see their friends have it, but they don't have a perception of how it's acquired. You have to teach. We as the adults have to teach them that. We have to teach them the value of money. They come to church, and they see their friend with something, or they go to school, and they see their friend with something. They want, it. They want to interact with it. They see their parents driving a car, living the house. They, they want to participate in it. How do they understand that one thing is translated from one to another? So you have to sit with them and talk about it and show them from God's word as well as you as an individual living that these things do not just appear. So my daughter's birthday was last week, Sunday, and she was singing the song of what she wanted for her birthday singing the song, singing the song. And she wanted a telephone. You know the arm? Yes. And the mother said, no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. She doesn't, no. Mm -hmm. But a daughter and a father, everybody started to laugh. A daughter and a father, there's a little difference, you know what I mean? So my daughter, and the mother still says, okay, good, no problem, okay. You will see about that. So look at that expression I told you. You will see about that. So my daughter for the last week has been enjoying her phone and so forth, telling and texting and interacting, calling me in the middle of the book, daddy, what you doing? Daddy, when you're coming home? Daddy, where you are? No, getting real calls from my daughter now, texts and so forth, texting her mother and saying, mom, I love you. She's having a good time. Then after my wife said something this morning that really, you know, she said, just now, the credit on the phone is going to run out. And she's going to have to come and ask us, you know, to top it up and so forth. And, you know, that's when you, you start to put the practical into it. Because if you just top it up, she doesn't draw the reference in terms of, hey, using this thing has a cost. My son also has a phone, and my wife handed him the, light, the telephone bill the other day. He said, so much? He said, yes. And just now it will be coming out of your allowance. So he's starting to, you know, well, uh, the sister first wanted to, he said, no, you can't use my phone. No, no, no. His friends, no, no, no. You know, every, all of a sudden now, nobody can touch that phone. You got in every minute because it has a cost. Let's bring it back to God's word. When we follow God's word, there's blessings. There's prosperity. There's protection. When we do not follow God's word, there can be abuse. 
They can be cursed and there is a cost. God's word is to guide us, to strengthen us, to keep us, to give us gladness. Because my daughter is happy, my son is happy when they could pick up the phone and interact with their friends. And it's just not, when I talk to their phones, it's not to go, my children are not the Facebook and these, you know, because from small, I tell them, this is not your portion in Jesus' name. They can use it when they get older and they fully understand it. But right now, it's for little things that they interact with. And it's not to use during the week. Let me just say, we have rules. By 8 o'clock, the phone is in my wife's hand. That's during the week. Because they only get it when they come home to interact with their friends and get homework and whatever. And it goes back. Weekend, they go to lessons. Okay, they have it to connect with us and get home and get back. See, yes, you can give them something, but there must be rule. The same way God, when he gave the children to the land, the promised land, the land of what? Milk and honey. But before he told them about milk and honey, he gave them rules. We all want the milk and honey. We want the blessings. We want the happiness. But before that can be achieved, we must understand that there are rules to walk within. If we don't, then after the, that same milk and honey, book of Proverbs talks about, if you have too much honey, it gets you sick. If you have too much milk and you can't use it, it will curl. For those of you who are lactate, lactate tolerant, what happens when you say, mm, milk, that same milk, you know? Give you a problem. Amen? It's the same thing if we do not understand the purpose of a thing in Jesus' name. Amen? So, the same law that Moses has given the children of Israel at the start, I want us to look at what he said about this same law in the book of Deuteronomy in verse in, sorry, in chapter 31 and I'm going to read from you for you, sorry from verse 9 first, yes, I'll read from verse 9 about keeping the law in remembrance and then I'm going to look at from verse 24. First and foremost, God said, uh, Moses was speaking unto the elders. And I'm just going to paraphrase this part. I'm going to paraphrase this part so I can get back. Verse 9 is saying, Every seven years, take those laws and call the whole of Israel together and read those laws over together as a community, as a people. Hold those laws, the elders, the parents, everybody for seven years. So even though at the beginning he told them every day they were supposed to have those laws before them, as a community, as a people, every seven years they were supposed to gather. And the part that stuck out for me, he says, gather the people. I'm looking from verse 12 here. Gather the people together, men and women and little ones and the strangers who are within your gates that they may hear and that they may learn to fear your God and be careful to observe all the words of the law. We are so sometimes accommodating in our country and even that when people come around us, you know, we don't want to show forth, well, you know, I'm going to church on Sunday, but you know, you could stay home and you could do what you want and when I come back, we would interact. We do not allow what is supposed to be, what is us, our culture, from being a Christian to affect them. We allow their lives to affect us. Here, Moses is telling the people, even if you have strangers in your midst, let them understand what it is to fear the Lord your God in your land. We must, reach, we must come away from being so accommodating that we do not understand what it is to put God first. No matter what the situation, no matter who the person, no matter what it is, God must be seen as first and foremost. And he said that, woman, little one, everybody, 
every seven years. So no matter if you forgot to do it in your household for that period, there was a, a time when the elders had to bring everybody to make sure, hey, they were kept in track. Amen? For that culture to be in, indoctrinated into them. But in, I'm going to read from verse 24 now, and this is what kind of shook me a bit, even for myself. I'm going to read from verse 24 to verse 29. So it was when Moses, Moses has completed writing the words of this law in a book, when they were finished, that Moses commanded the Levites who bore the ark of the covenant of the Lord, saying, Take this book of the law and put it beside the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, that it may be there as a witness against you. For I know your rebellion and fled. If today, while I am yet alive with you, you have been rebellious against the Lord, then how much more after my death? Now, just before that, Moses was talking about bringing all the elders and so forth. And, uh, but Moses now tell them, he know that they've been rebellious. He know that they're just given face service. And what is going to happen when he leaves? They are going to become a rebellious people. I speak that not against us, against, away from us in Jesus' name. When we hear the word, we shall not be called a rebellious people, but we shall call it doers of the word. Amen? He said, gather to me all the elders of your tribes and of your officers, that I may speak these words in their heart and call heaven and earth to witness against them. For I know that after my death, you will become utterly corrupt and turn away from the ways which I have commanded you. And the evil and, and evil will befall you in the latter days because you will do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger through the works of your hands. Now, I'm reading this because I want us to understand that gladness this is the month of gladness. I say, how does that kind of gladness come from? Oh. We as leaders, we as parents, we as guardians and so forth need to realize our words must not just be face or lip service. Because this is what happens when it is that. When the individuals are not before us, when we are not in our Christian league environment, when we are in our workplace where we are not surrounded by our Christian brothers, sisters, we are challenged to keep God's word and put it foremost. Let not the spirit of God say, hey, he is going to just judgment on us. But let the word of God be our guide in such a way that is hidden in our heart that we bring forth it in every situation. Going back to my little thing with myself on the driving, at that point in time, my mind, yes, I think about protecting my family, but would I really protect my family? If I called those guys, if I got them to stop, I think I was going to tell them, why are going to church? Call it bounce my car. You think I was going to come out and be talking like that? Not likely. True. Not likely. And the situation is that, thank God that I didn't stop them. Because I don't know what would happen. But today, wisdom prevails. And I'm seeing my son having that tendency of having that temper. I've got to realize that, hey, not only do I have to just talk to him about it, but he must see me in such a way that, that the matter what happens, I'm able to speak a better way of doing things. Now, I don't know if my wife's going to like this one, but I'm going to tell you something. Eh? Protection of the mic and the podium. Yeah, if I put, I could cook, I could cook, I could cook, I could cook. I could cook, I know, I know my mother's house is, I know my mother in law is, and I know the grace of God is upon my life. The grace... Don't say no more. I'm thinking myself. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Minister Michelle. You see? Words of wisdom. Words of wisdom. The other day, um, we, about two or three Sundays ago, uh, there was a breaking at our home. All right? We were here ministering in church, and there was a breaking at our home. God's grace and mercy kept us. I mean, when the officers came to do the, and they looked at the house and said, look what they really take. Because they broke down the whole back door. They went into my daughter's room. 
we're in our bedroom. So you're expecting chaos, basically, when you get in the house. So God's grace and favor, when we got into the house, there were three laptops on the different end team. All the laptops were there. They were my children's games and my um, you know, Kindle and everything in front of the television. Everything was still there. Um, in my wife's, in, the, in, the, in our bedroom and so forth. There were jewelry and so forth, watches, still there. So the officers and I'm walking around. What did they really take? You understand? The only thing that my wife lost was, my wife says it was a chain that she had just changed that morning because you know you ladies always have to match everything that you're wearing. So she took off the che one chain and she put on something else. Right? And my daughter had $100 in her thing. She looked in the house. My wife was telling them that she lost a pair of earrings as well. This morning she came to me and she said, thank God for a blind thief. Because she showed me the earrings. <laughs> right there. And I'm saying that all these things that God kept our home. Amen? He kept our home. Right? But this week, after doing all the repairs and so forth, the door that they broke down, we put up a big steel door, six or twelve locks and so forth. Right? But I have the habit every morning I go out and I go to the back, I take care of the dogs, and I come back in, and I pull in the door. Sometime this week, I came in, pulled in the door, and did not lock the door. So I left home, head off to work, and my wife was with the kids, left home, and something on top of the street said, he locked that door, boy. Let me go back and check that door. So my wife went back home, Went through the house, turn off, and checked the back door, and the back door was open. So she was upset. She was upset, Mr. Samisha. <laughs> yeah, she was upset. And yeah, she should be. I was wrong. But something else happened. My son said something that kind of shook her and shook me too. He said, Mommy, why are you going back and check the door? You don't trust Daddy? Now, everybody go hear that the wrong way, right? You understand? But yes, he was right, but then he was wrong. Yes, he was right in terms of asking, Mommy, don't you trust Daddy? Yes, we can interact that. But I told, I, when I had to sit down to explain it, I said, I sat down the same evening, I said, it's not that Mommy and Daddy don't trust one another, but there's something greater called the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is what we have got to put all our trust in. And mommy, at that point in time, trust the Holy Spirit. To listen to the Holy Spirit and say, go back and check the door. That is what you have to realize, son. That yes, we have a relationship and we may err uh, in what we're doing, flesh to flesh. But you see, once you put God first, once you put God first, no matter who he is, he's going to talk to you. And as a young man, I want you to learn to listen to the Holy Spirit. Because that was what mom did that morning. Mom could have said, this is my husband, God, he take care of it and not listen, but the Holy Spirit checked her spirit, and she obeyed, and she went back, and she checked the door, and locked up. That is what life is all about. That is what putting God first is all about. So yes, yes, my son was saying, hey, and my wife felt kind of, mm, how you can say that? But I'm saying, you know, why from to him, the parents are supposed to trust one another, and I said, yes. That is why mommy and I can talk about anything, and even though she was upset, we could um, have intense moment of fellowship and come to an amicable and reasonable conclusion. Amen? And yes, I could not understand about it because everything is supposed to be a learning experience. A blessing to you to take you to a higher level. So now every time I go through that door, every time I come back in, I make sure and check that door because I do not want that experience again. <laughs> come on. It's being truthful. So here it is. The children of God are called to keep God in remembrance. But they are not living it out. Because how they interact one with another. Moses could have seen that, hey, as soon as I leave, as soon as somebody can say, they're not going to talk to Moses about what you do. They are going to go back to that old way. And I'm saying that is not our portion. Why is not our portion? Because like I read in the book of Proverbs, he says, once we keep these words, they shall be what? life unto us. Other men, they shall keep us in peace. Right? And what I want us to realize that these words 
as we are speaking them in terms of gladness, in terms of keeping God's portion, can do can keep us. I want to give us three points that they can do for our lives. As we put them first and foremost, as we become the traditions of our lives, he said these words can do three things. One, first one, these principles I would say, these principles can give us three things. One, they will be a guide. I've been saying it over. They will be a guide unto us. A guide that will help us to stay on the right path. To ensure that whatever we seek to do will be a blessing before God and before man. And favor shall be our portion. Amen? That these words and these instructions shall also be a guard. It will keep us on hedge us on every side. That our path is going to be a straight one. That the enemy shall not be able to take us from the left, nor turn us to the left, nor to the right, but protect us and to protect our hearts and minds and bodies so that it will be honorable unto God. And I think one of the most important things that these words and these instructions would be a gauge. A gauge for us to measure how we interact with people and who we interact with. Are the individuals around us a blessing to us, a source of inspiration to lift us to a higher level? Are we speaking, are, are individuals speaking into our lives, are they going to bring us to a better place? That is what this word is supposed to be, a gauge for us and our children and so forth. When they interact, when you hear them speak, are, they, are their words going to be one of empowerment and enrichment, a positive thing into their lives, or is it going to be negative? Is it going to be speaking down? Are they, when they get angry, what is going to be the first thing to come out of their mouth? That is what this word is supposed to be, a gauge to ensure that they can be that their life you can evaluate you can evaluate your life because it's going to be a gauge for you and you can evaluate the lives of those around you that you interact with it is important that these principles can direct your decision making because if it cannot then after your decision making will be turned to and fro today you'll be heading north and somebody will speak to you and because you do not have a proper direction, you may turn and have to head east. And then somebody else may speak to you, and you may turn and head west. And you may never find yourself reaching your destination because you do not have in your mind a guide or principle to keep you fixed on your focus. Amen? So, God's word must be that in your life, that beacon, that I will almost say lighthouse. Because that's what a lighthouse is. If a ship is going in a storm or going off course, a lighthouse can let them know where the land is, where the rapid, and a guide. That's what God's word is supposed to be. So as you instruct or take instructions, let God's word be that in your life. Amen? And I think with that, no matter what happens, no matter when the bad days come, gladness will be always be your portion. Because you would able you would able to stand and go back that God is your rock. He's your foundation. He's not shifting sand. He is that who's going to keep you and guide you. And more foremost, he's going to guard you. Amen. Well, that, my friends my word for this morning. Well, this afternoon I'll try to finish this morning. Right? I'd like us to stand and like us to pray as a people before I hand the mic over again to Pastor Jared. Because more and more I'm coming to realize yes, we pray. But we can truly change things in praying one for another in our prayer. Family that prays together stays together. And we are family. Amen? If it's possible, hold somebody's hand next to you. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and we give you praise for your living word. Your word, O oh Lord, says unto us, O oh Lord, Father, first and foremost, seek forth your blessings, O oh Lord, Father, honoring you as the God of our lives, O oh God. First and foremost, Praise your name. 
put you before us in everything, even as the children of Israel, have you going before them, O Lord Father, as a pillar to ensure, O Lord Father, that their path will clear. So I speak you going before each and every one of us, O Lord. O Lord Father. So I thank you that you stand behind us, O Lord Father, as our rear guard, ensuring that nothing shall come near us nor dwelling, O Lord Father. And I thank you, O Lord Father, that our minds, our hearts are shaped and fashioned, O Lord Father, as you have deposited your word in us this morning, O Lord Father, to be a good help one to another, to truly pray for one another, O Lord Father. Where we lack understanding, O Lord Father, of any situation, let the Holy Spirit pray through us, O oh Lord Father, that we are strengthened on every side. And no good thing but you would hold from us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. It is well. Man of God.